Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Some amazing new UX UI trends have propped up from some major companies that you might know of, and they're flooding the internet with different companies picking up those trends and using them in their own unique manner. Today we'll be breaking down each design trend. I have all the relevant timestamps right. I also have some Figma files in the description if I find some pertaining to each trend so that you can also design based on that trend. Also, if you like this series that I've been doing on the channel, hit the like button, share this video if you have friends in the design world and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. All right, so the first one is this new sort of bottom alignment of titles, buttons, etc. And now the focus is video in the middle with, of course, acting as the hero image or the hero video and the text, like the title being on the top left, then action, the CTA or certain pointers at the bottom. So the focus is going from top to bottom, which is just beautiful. It's just very natural for the users to go this way. And it's easier for designers to fit in a width and height video on both mobile and laptops as well. The cool thing about this is that it helps fit more information in a small space before the user scrolls to the next section. And even when they might move to the next section, there might be some bottom aligned elements in different sections as well, which is really cool too. We can see this on different websites and a majority of them I found on awards website, which of course awards the top design websites ever. And a lot of these top winners of this award are following this regime now, this whole bottom and top alignment. And then there's in the center, there's a major video which helps tell a story. So storytelling is definitely in the foreground here. But overall, I feel one of the best design trends because it's very natural and it's easy to implement it. Now this also happens because videos these days are getting lighter, number one. Number two, it's easier to put them up thanks to formats like WebM, which is again, web video, which easily plays high quality video without having to load a lot before that. So if you're on a decent internet, this, this video format is gonna work very well for you. All right, so the next big thing is something that Apple started years ago, but websites and other apps are now just picking it up. It's a search console that opens up every time you wanna search something. This is similar to the spotlight search you have on Mac. Samsung and other operating systems are also following suit, but now websites are coming up with this. I have many examples these days which are switching from the traditional search method to this now new search method, which can search premium searches. It can give you your past searches. You can even add filters while searching. That is very useful. The great thing about this whole console style pop-up search is that it allows you to have this distraction free search experience and is allow you and also gives you all the recommendations you need from a business standpoint. I think that is very beneficial. If a business wants to show an ad or show a premium feature, whatever it is, they can do so while the user is searching, which once again is fulfilling a business objective, which is really nice. I actually tried this on mobile and what they're doing is they're just shifting to a full screen search rather than this pop-up search. I mean, that's fair because on mobile, the search anyways is very small. The whole console might make it much smaller, but they're following the same regime of having different aspects of search, like what's trending or what's premium, your past searches, etc., as well as filters along with this. It's nothing brand new, but the trend is how you use it as well as how you present it to the user. The way it's been done now, the whole spotlight search mechanism Works well, even Figma has picked this up, other websites are picking it up. So, I mean, it just makes sense that you even implement it in your own designs. Okay, so the next trend works very well if you're trying to show it as a portfolio project, or even when you're trying to create like a very minimalistic, but very unique, soothing looking website. This is the whole text gradient as well as background gradients being combined into one to create this whole look for the brand on your website or your app. For example, this one is find peace. The website follows gradients, these complex gradients along with images all throughout the header and some text and titles that works brilliantly. Again, as you can see, following the whole bottom alignment kind of format again, but this looks really good. Complex gradients are now being blended in with images as well. So not just the titles, but the gradients themselves are changing. Gradients earlier were gradient over image, behind image, 
or over and behind text. Now it's blending in with the images, creating this holographic style, almost a very holographic look that you get from this whole design trend. And to implement this is very easy. Now with in Figma, you have progressive blur. You can use progressive blur on images as well as on gradients and combine both of those effects. You can even see things like progressive blurs and textures now with those gradients working very well with the titles and the backgrounds. These progressive blur gradients inside titles are just beautiful. This is what was missing from titles. Titles were getting boring. Now they're getting this new overall essentially. So combine both text gradients and background gradients Use progressive blurs and textures that you find in Figma now or in other tools as well. Go, go crazy, go, go ballistic. Now, talking about how design tools are affecting our design trends, the new trend is to use over minimalism. Now, over minimalism is a dangerous ballpark, is a dangerous place to play. But this is being brought in by the whole AI influx of design tools. A lot of AI design tools don't use complex UIs. They don't create complex UIs. Take Google Stitch, for example, they create something a little more basic and straightforward along with a more minimal. And the more common AI UIs get, the more common these type of styles will become. The distance between a basic wireframe and a final UI design is becoming blurred out because of all this whole thing that is happening. Now, AI is great. Now, this is great for new businesses who don't have the budget to hire a UI designer. But over time, I feel a lot of UI designers will start following this whole minimalistic trend. Take Figma AI, for example, even when it has to create something a little more complex, follows a very minimalistic approach. So earlier where designers were just following minimalistic approaches, AI is also now following minimalistic approach which is very unique because now a lot of designers are dependent on AI. So, I mean, it's coming from all directions. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Or is the new over minimalism trend a good thing? Let me know in the comments. I would like to know your opinions. Is AI influencing how UI designers design? Cool thing to talk about. Let's do that in the comments. I'll be sure to reply to you guys this time because I'm starting this whole discussion. Okay, gamification is everywhere and it's becoming a gambling problem. This is something I spoke about in one of my shorts slash reels. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll find it. But the problem right now is every app now has a gamified aspect to it, encouraging users to spend more time, money and effort on their product. So if you ever order groceries online or food online, at the end, you'll find gamified elements to try and help you, but in certain cases, will try and take your money to spend on products you maybe didn't really need or thing offers that you would otherwise ignore, they're bringing to you through gamified experiences. Spin the wheel, get a prize, or, oh, you got an offer, use it in the next 24 hours. Gambling-like interfaces is becoming way more prominent and relevant in the UX space these days. And it's not something which is very shocking. It's just something that comes with, as time changes, as attention spans change, as companies fight for relevance and money from you, it becomes more important to use these gamified elements. And now users are more used to and welcoming of these gamified features as well. So uh, I'll have an article in the description, read about it, I think it's, an upcoming topic that you can study and you can bring to the table for your own company as well. Maybe it works well for you, who knows? All right, progressive blur are back. They never seem to really leave us, do they? Now, recently I've seen a lot of designers, programmers, utilizing the progressive blur aspect of glass, which is what Apple is pushing these days, and utilizing it in areas I never thought would be possible or would be useful. For example, the top bar they're utilizing this whole glass blur on top, a progressive blur. So when you scroll, certain aspects of the UI just blurs out and it just becomes this unique experience for the user. Bad idea. There are two reasons why this is a bad idea. This is a trend, but shouldn't become a full-fledged trend. I hope not. Number one, readability issues. It'll always have some issues with readability, whether it's with the images in the background or it could be a performance issue. We've all seen how certain websites can cause issues with performance on your phone or even your computer. 
If you open up a very heavy website on a very slow performing laptop, you will know what I mean. Now this whole liquid glass theme is fine, but going overboard with this using liquid glass on more progressive blur becomes a little too much on the eyes. But what to do? A lot of designers have started to use this. There are some unique good utilization of this. For example, on a light background, this mobile when it's just scrolling, things are just hiding behind. So the status bar can have a slight progressive blur below that, creating this unique hidden experience or this leaving experience. I think this is a better implementation, not what a lot of glass morphism fellows are creating online. But I think Robert Bai created this, so kudos to you. Bobby, you've outdone yourself this time. Again, a lot of times it's not what progressive blur is, but how it's utilized and how glass is utilized over it. Another good example of this is how Sketch uses it. Again, it's very subjective. Design is becoming more and more subjective these days. God. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. There are a lot of this other design trends to cover. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments as usual. I'd love to cover it in the next video. Again, short, quick, and simple, just like we like it. Again, hit the like button if you like the video. I mean, that supports and helps the channel a lot. These are free videos, but if you ever want to support the channel, the best way is just to, you know, hit the like button. It's as simple and easy as that. And go ahead and share this video, comment down below anything that you like, and I'll see you in the next video next week. Until next time, take care. God bless.